You know, when men and women, superstars and divas, are let go by the WWE, or even when wrestlers and knockouts are let go by, you know, TNA, or even wrestlers and women wrestlers are let go by Ring of Honor or whoever, sometimes depending on how big of a name they are for that company, or despite how mildly successful they've been, it seems that... It seems that when they go to the independents or they end up going to another company, whether it's in Japan, here in the United States, Canada, Mexico, wherever, Europe, it seems that they always end up either... Well, most of the times they'll either change their names and they'll still be that same person. You'll know them by, like, you know, let's say Justin Gabriel. You'll know them, you know, they'll go by PJ Black now, but you'll know them as Gabriel. You know, and still have the same moves and all that. And they might get better opportunities. Heck, they might even become a champion. Maybe a world champion. Maybe the champion for that promotion. But it seems... <coughs> It seems that after a while, that certain, <coughs> certain superstars, despite how, you know, over they might have been or how many opportunities they've been given before with certain companies, it seems that the men, certain men and women always end up, after getting the opportunity to probably be a champion, which some have, some have had the opportunity to be world champion <coughs> on several occasions. And some have just been given the opportunity to wrestle for that world title or even any champ or even any championship, but not become that champion. So what happens to that individual? What happens to that superstar, that women or that diva, that knockout, that women's wrestler? Well apparently from what I've read, and this is why I'm talking this is the topic here. It seems that various tag teams are formed by certain individuals, by certain superstars and divas, knockouts, if you will. Yeah, it seems that the independent, you see, now I'm not saying I'm not a fan of tag team wrestling, I am. And I'm kind of respectful to the fact that the WWE <coughs> is doing what they can to revitalize the tag team division. I kind of respect maybe that TNA is trying to put spotlights on their tag team division like they did a few weeks ago. And I do have nothing but uber respect for the fact that Ring of Honor somewhat has a good tag team division as well because their tag team division expands just be, you know, expands beyond, you know, their roster. It does. <coughs> So, the question is, is it me, or do these men and women always seem to be reduced to having to team up with other men and women who have been let go from the same company or different companies, just to become a champion, or just to get their name out there? Well, obviously that seems to be the case. You know, I take a look at the Killer Elite Squad, one of the top tag teams in all of Japan, if not the world. I wouldn't specifically say the world. Here's why. Because, with all due respect to its leniency, uh, uh, leniency, or uh, leniency, or leniency, or whatever you want to call it, despite its legacy is literacy, if you will, nobody really takes the NWA that seriously anymore. <coughs> Excuse me. They don't. They don't take the NWA that seriously anymore. And here's why. If they took the NWA seriously, the NWA would be on a national platform again. They wouldn't be reduced, with all due respect, to NWA Championship from Hollywood. 
Now, some might say that they do have a national, uh, national uh, television slot, but guess what? That national television slot is either through DirecTV or Dish Network, and not many people use DirecTV or Dish Network or even AT&T. Nobody uses, no, not many people use the Dish Network or DirecTV anymore. Not saying that people don't. But everybody's more along the lines of uh, streaming, more along the lines of Verizon, AT&T, Comcast, Cablevision. They're still around those areas. As far as DirecTV and Dish Network goes, you can advertise as good a deal as you want. Not many people are still going to go for it. And... If that's where the NWA has got its main programming at, then that's not helping them. All right? That's not helping them. You know, and if that, <coughs> and if that's what makes the NWA, or at least with all due respect to Lance Hoyt and, and Davy Boy Smith uh, Jr., Davy Boy Smith Jr., with all due respect to you guys, you're a great tag team. I saw what you guys did with Wrestle Kingdom 9. I'm not denying you don't deserve to be where you are. But to say you're the best tag team in the world is far-fetched. Because one, like I said, nobody takes the NWA seriously anymore with all due respect to its leniency. With all due respect. Nobody really takes it seriously anymore. They take Noah, Pro Wrestling Noah, I do, New Japan, All Japan, AAA, CMLL. They take these companies more seriously than they do new, the NWA. So even though you're the NWA World Tag Team Champions, and that's great and all, you join a long list of legendary tag teams, Hall of Fame tag teams, that have held those belts. It doesn't mean you're the best. It just means... That with all due respect, you guys had nothing else to do. You saw the chemistry that you both had with each other and said, you know what, let's become a tag team. And that's what you did. And sometimes promotions just put you in together as tag teams to see if it's going to work because they have nothing else for you. And that is why, you know, I love tag team wrestling and everything. I like the fact that these guys see that there's a void there that tag team wrestling needs that ha tag team wrestling has and needs to be filled i'm i'm happy about that but the thing is if this is what you're reduced to then why didn't you stick with it in the first place huh you know rob conway teams up with this what is this jack's guy or whatever his name jake guy Call themselves the Iron Gods? Seriously? The Iron Gods. That's your tag team name. <coughs> oh gosh. And then Chris Masters, Chris Mordinsky, and Bobby Lashley. Team Body Guys? Seriously? Look. I'm. Look. I'm happy that they're doing what they can to revitalize tag team wrestling in all of wrestling. I get, I respect that. <coughs> Nothing but mad props. Okay? But if this is what you guys are reduced to, why did you just stick with it when you had it originally? I mean, true, the WWE may have not given you the opportunities you felt you deserved because of, because of your leniency and all that, and they should have. Don't get me wrong. But you should have stuck with what you had. Look at Tyson Kidd. Here's a guy that tried to do it on his own, with all due respect, but realized he's best equipped to be a tag team wrestler. Because it's probably best suited for him until the opportunity presents itself to allow him to be a huge star. <clears throat> Look at Cesaro. WWE tried to push him as an individual many times. But guess what? He found his niche as a tag team wrestler. Because why? 
That's what made him, that's how he made his name originally, as a tag team wrestler. So, as much respect as I have for all these men and women that are doing what they can to bring tag team wrestling back to the forefront, not just in WWE, TNA, Ring of Honor, wherever, but all the way around, with all the due respect I have for that, and much mad love for that, the question is, why didn't you just stick with it in the first place? Why couldn't you just let the companies that had you in that situation just let you stay in that situation instead of trying to be something that you're not. <coughs> I mean, I mean, look what you've been reduced to. With all due respect to independent wrestling, look what you've been reduced to. Davy Boy Smith Jr. reduced to, from what I've seen, to competing in a freaking mall. And not just a Mall of America or anything like that. No. I'm talking a mall where it's literally in the middle. Okay, let, let me give you an example. Here I'm sitting. The ring is right behind where this camera is. You've seen the living room, right? It's like, okay. That is basically, my living room is basically the ring. Okay, the middle part of my living room, basically the ring. Where the chairs and everything are, like where that couch is over there, table is, and all that. That's sort of an idea of the audience. And all due respect, I know he's trying just to keep doing what he's doing and doing what he's loved. With all due respect, and I have nothing but respect there, but with all due respect, seriously, this is what that's what you reduced yourself to until finally you realize, oh. I should have been a, I should have stayed a tag, you know, my calling's tag team wrestling. You had a great tag team in the Hart Dynasty. Why didn't you keep that? It's, it, it just boggles my mind. And I'm not, now, hear me out. I'm not blaming the men and the women that get put in these situations. I'm not. I do blame the promotions for not keeping them in that position they were better suited for. I blame the promotions. Look, the promotions, the promoters, the bookers, they take as much blame as the men and women that are in those situations. They do. And the thing is, if you know you got a good thing on both ends, don't screw it up. Because if you screw it up and it costs you maybe your job to where you got to go to various independence, independence areas, especially, like I said, a mall, to basically your living room, your living room could be the ring, could be half of your living room could be the ring, and just all the way around, nothing more. <laughs> the point is, don't, if you know tag team wrestling is your calling, don't screw it up. I mean, again, nothing but mad love and respect for the men and women trying to revitalize tag team wrestling in this business. Nothing but mad respect. <clears throat> but the thing is, if you know that's your calling, stick with it. And promoters, bookers, owners <clears throat> of these various wrestling companies and promotions, if you know that's the calling, don't screw it up as well. Because if you screw it up as well, What's the point of even doing it in the first place? You know what I'm saying? <coughs> I mean, you had so much potential. I mean, God rest his soul, Nelson Fraser Jr., Viscera. God rest his soul. He had a niche for tag team wrestling. Yet you couldn't keep him with either Charlie Haas or Val Venus. You couldn't keep either one of the. You couldn't keep him with one of those guys. Seriously, you 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 couldn't keep him with one of those guys. You bought him. You made him bring. You brought him back with Gang Grell. You couldn't keep him with Gang Grell. 
at one point? I mean, seriously. And and then you team him, and then you put him in ECW, make him Big Daddy V, and you put him in a tag team at times with Matt Stryker as his manager slash partner. You couldn't work with something there? Seriously? You team him up with Mark Henry, and you couldn't keep that going? Do you know the potential you had there? Instead, what happens? He gets let go. And from what I've seen on YouTube, and some people have said, the last major wrestling appearance he ever really made outside of Japan is wrestling in a ring where he has to get ready and dressed in a public restroom or wherever, coming out of a, an auto dealership or an auto shop. I mean, no, dude, no, with all, I mean, nothing against wanting to continue living your dream and provide for your family. Nothing but mad love and respect, but, but seriously? I mean, if a company, a promotion knows they have a good thing, potentially tag team, has a good tag team right there, potentially a good one, take a chance. And those involved with it, Take a chance. Because you know why? W. Because you know why? Wrestling sorely needs the tag team divisions revitalized. It doesn't matter what company internationally, you know, internationally or country wise or whatever. It doesn't matter what company or promotion has a decent tag team division. If you know. There's still a major void that needs to be filled to the point that every promotion you know of has a decent and in, 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 in deep enough tag team division to where even a tag team title match can main event, a pay-per-view. Then nothing but mad respect and love for the people doing it. But if you know that if you know tag team wrestling is what you're meant to do in this business and nothing more. As great as it is to focus on the goal of being the world champion for the promotional company you're working for, then do it. Stick with it. And whatever happens, let the company or promotion you're working for know, hey, don't break us up. Don't break me and this guy up. Try to talk them into keeping you guys together. Even if that other person probably feels they want to go and do other things, talk that other person into staying. Because it's probably the best suit for you. It's probably best suited for you. Again, I look at all these... <coughs> I look at Tyson, Kidd, and Cesaro. No one would ever think they would be good as a tag team. And they are. And they're freaking baby faces now. And sometimes when you break a tag team up, you realize, oh crap, this guy has the, poten this guy has the potential to be good, but he was better as a tag team guy and that helped him grow uh let's put him back with his partner example primetime players possible example if you watch tonight with Luke Harper and Eric Rowan the point is if you got a good thing going don't screw it up don't screw it up on either ends to the point that when you go someplace else, you find out that, hey, I'm probably better off as a tag team wrestler. And the person you team with, even though they worked in the same company you did for a little while, proves to be your, a good partner. And you guys go on to become champions, not just in another country, but abroad. Just proves one thing. You, that tag team wrestling is what you were always meant to. To do. And don't screw up a good thing. Yeah, the company you may work for may not be the best company. But at least they know. At least someone backstage knows that this is what you're suited to do. Don't screw.